Oh boy, okay. So this question is crazy hard. And the only reason that I get it right is because I know the SAT and I know kind of like the right path through trigonometry questions. So I'm going to show you literally exactly how I did this question in the moment. There's nothing different about what I'm going to do now to how I did it when I first saw it. So it, it's clearly about trigonometry. I recognize that we're talking cosine and sine. So the first thing I do is I write Sokotoa on my page. And this is my way of remembering the sine, cosine, and tangent functions, how they look and how we make them. So, okay, I wrote that down, but let's see what, they have some other instructions here. In triangle RST above, point W, not shown, lies on RT. So, okay, I'm gonna make a little point W and just put it somewhere in the middle-ish. It doesn't really matter. Now they want the value of cosine of angle RSW, which means I gotta draw not just the, the point, but the line, because RSW is, is right in here. Right, so that's that's this angle. And then sine of WST, that's that's this other one here. Okay. So cosine is gonna be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. But look at the problem with this, with this blue angle here. This triangle, let me see if I can color it. Uh, this is messy. Let me color it with a highlighter so I, you can see kind of what I see. So I'm looking just at this yellowish triangle on the left. And I'm trying to do cosine, because I, I know how to do cosine. It's adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, I don't have any measurements here. Oh, I do a 5 and 12, and I could I could actually figure this out. Um, I know from experience that this whole RT is 13. 5, 12, 13 is a special triangle. I could do my calculator and Pythagorean theorem to show it, but 5, 12, 13. So I don't know the 13 because it's it's divided up into two different parts because of point W, but the problem with the yellow triangle is my normal cosine stuff doesn't work because I don't have a hypotenuse. In order for there to be a hypotenuse, I need a 90 degree angle. The hypotenuse by definition is the side that is opposite the 90 degree angle. But there's no right angle in the yellow triangle, right? It's kind of thin. So that's a problem. Now there was a 90 degree angle in, at S, but I chopped it up. So that doesn't really do me any good anymore because if I'm trying to do the cosine of angle RSW, I can't use an angle that's not part of the triangle. So this, this is just messy. The, the long story short here is I'm rambling because I'm in my brain like, uh-oh, there's a problem. Something's broken. Sokotoa isn't going to work. I don't have any right triangles anymore. I have two weird triangles. Maybe I could reposition W to make some right triangles. But here's the better solution. I know through experience that if... So Katoa doesn't work for a trigonometry question. There's one other formula or series of formulas that is probably being tested. So I don't know this because I'm good at trigonometry. I know this because I'm good at the SAT. If it's not So Katoa, there's two other formulas that m probably are involved. Sine of x is equal to cosine of 90 minus x and kind of the reverse of that formula, that the cosine of x is equal to the sine of 90 minus x. So most questions, 90% of trigonometry questions on the SAT are gonna involve Sokotoa. So this is where you should start. But if you find yourself in a situation that doesn't work, write these two things on your page, see if you can make them fit, because odds are good that if Sokotoa isn't working, it's probably one of these. So now my brain is like, okay, can I make this work? Well, they want cosine of RSW. Let's call that X. Let's make RSW X. So that way it conforms with this piece right here. Okay, so this is now that. 
So what I would then say is, okay, how can I make sine of WST kind of fit this model? Well, conveniently, if RSW is X, then WST, this angle right here in orange, that's going to be 90 minus X. Now I could give the X some values if I really wanted to, so I can kind of arithmetize and use the calculator, but you don't need to because I'm looking for 90s. That's the point. That's the point of this formula is I'm looking for 90s. And the two angles that I'm supposed to care about add up to 90. They are a place where I chopped up a 90 degree angle into two separate angles. I don't care if one of them is, a, is 10 degrees and the other is 80 degrees. I don't care if it's 30 and 60. I don't care if it's 1 and 89. I just care that they add up to 90. So if I make RSWX, then WST is going to be 90 minus X because those things together would be 90. And so now sine of WST is sine of 90 minus X. Well, what do I know about sine of 90 minus X? I know that it's equal to cosine of X. So what I really have here is if I take this thing here, kind of drop it down, cosine of RSW, it's highlighted in pink, I'm calling cosine of X. And now in orange, this WST piece is now 90 minus X, which is the same as cosine of X because of my formula. So I can just make a little bit of a substitution. And I have cosine of x minus cosine of x, which is 0. And that's the answer. This is weird. This is weird. It's hard. It's also very hard. Even with this formula, you got to be clever here. But what I want to stress is that I didn't know that I was going to use this formula when I started. And even when I figured out that I should try the formula, I didn't know how it would work. I just knew to try it. And that's a great example of how a lot of SAT questions are going to feel, hard questions, is you don't know where you're going, but because of practice, you kind of know that there's only so many ways to get there. So trigonometry is a great example because there's literally just kind of two things. If it's not so Katoa, it's probably this other formula. So I tried Sokoto and it didn't work. So I'm like, all right, I've only got really one other chance here. Hopefully that works. And I, my goal when I was writing it down was to be like, can I make it fit? Can I get an X and a 90 minus X somewhere on this picture? And it's not a coincidence that the things that I need to worry about happened to be around a 90 degree angle. So it was very easy for me to do that. And then just some substitutions and it kind of works itself out and yeah, I get zero. And like I said, I, I could have arithmetized here. I could have picked some values of X and actually figured some things out, but I think it gets messy because then you have all sorts of decimals and people kind of get a little confused. And um, it, I wouldn't want you to waste too much time on a question like this. If you can get past this spot, you're probably good. And then you can finish it up. But if you can't even get to that, then it's a great example of just pick something and move on. Um, but think, try to keep this lesson in mind that, that SAT questions are going to feel this way where you're just kind of stumbling towards the answer. If you know of the, the different ways they ask questions, you're going to see that there's only so many ways that we can get there. So trying something is usually going to help you because it's trying the right thing that you should have tried anyway. Even if you're not sure, it, it usually gets you somewhere and writing it down helps your brain see things it wouldn't see otherwise. And eventually, out pops the answer, and that's a great feeling.